Good morning, good morning. Well, Pastor Pilar has come back from Puerto Rico. Praise be to the living God. Your husband's glad to have you home. Hallelujah. Canada, Louisiana, Chicago. Hello, Apostle Glenn, Charlotte Awakening, Awakening Blaze in the house, awakeningblaze.com. Join the movement. We're going to get started in just a moment. Share this with your friends, invite your followers, you know the drill. Angela Jennings, Cape Town, South Africa, I need to get down there, not sure when. God is good. Melbourne, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, author of our devotional, Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God, senior leader at the Awakening House of Prayer, founder, Ignite Network. Today's devotion titled, Don't Worry About Tomorrow. <laughs> That's a good word. We could stop right there and we could preach. We could rejoice. We could sing songs. Don't worry about tomorrow. You are going to be okay, says the Lord. I know sometimes you get anxious about what the future holds, but you don't have to worry because Father holds your future in his hands and his thoughts towards you are good. Rest assured that he plans to prosper you and not to harm you. He plans to give you a hope and a future in his kingdom that is far above anything you can even dream. So don't worry about tomorrow, says God. Our grace is sufficient. 
That's a good word. Today's scripture references Jeremiah 29, verse 11, Proverbs 12 and 25, and Jeremiah 17, verses 7 and 8. And the prayer starter for today, I believe you. You are good. I cast my burdens, fears, worries, and anxieties about the future on you. I commit to thinking hopeful thoughts about the future that you have in store for me. Please give me your grace to walk in confidence. God is good. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God of yesterday, today, and forever. You are not just uh, the, 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 the God of the I was. You are the God of the I am. You are magnificent and holy. There is no other God who is even worthy to be mentioned in the same sentence with you. You are, oh, <laughs> you are wonderful. Your name is wonderful. Your name is reverence. Your name is holy. We thank you, Lord, for your name. That name, it's above all names. It's above every single name that could ever possibly be named. There is no other name that will ever be greater than your name, Jesus. Your name is great. Your name is awe-inspiring. Your name, it just rolls off our lips with such an ease, with such a grace, and it terrorizes the enemy. Oh, how our enemies hate that name. It's the name at which every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that you are our Lord. You are the Lord of all. You are the Lord of the pro of the persecutors and the prosecutors. You are the Lord of the naysayers and the negative ones. You are the Lord of the users and the despiteful abusers and the accusers. You are still their Lord. Oh, they might not acknowledge you as Lord. They might defy your Lordship. They might grieve your spirit, but you are still the Lord of all. You are the creator of all. You are the maker of all. You are the, oh, shut up you are the one and only God. There is no other God like you. Oh, the creator, the maker of heaven and of earth, the maker, the creator of us. You made us, you created us in your image, God. We're so grateful. We don't have to, to seek knowledge from other sources because the all-knowledgeable one lives on the inside of us. And you share with us your secrets. You share with us your plans as we need to know them. You share with us the things that we need to see, the things we need to hear, the things we need to understand. You give us wisdom liberally. So we praise you this morning, God. We give you everything that is in our heart, all the love, all the praise, all the grace. And God, whatever's in our heart, that doesn't belong there. We invite you in. We open the door of our heart and we fling it wide and we say, God, come in. Do what only you can do. Deal with the things that grieve you. So, uh, uh, deliver us, God, from the captivity of hurts and wounds, those things the enemy uh, has inflicted upon us that has left uh, uh, marks, that has left blemishes, let it, that has left spots, God. Lord, deliver us from evil. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. You are precious. You are holy. You are awesome. Awesome is not a big enough word to describe who you are to us and what you mean to us, Lord. It's everything. Oh, God, you are everything. You mean everything. When those come along our paths who want to, to give a deaf ear uh, to, to, to the praises that are released out of our mouth, those who come along and, and want to malign us because we stand for your principles and your purposes, those who want want to ignore your precepts and your protocols, those who just want to do their own thing, God, and, and at the expense of others, those who want to just, uh, what is it I'm saying, the Lord is, is about to break loose, God, pray with me in the spirit, something is brewing, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, and the Lord shows me today that there were some, they were supposed to be on your side. They were supposed to be defending you. They were supposed to be advocating for you. They were supposed to actually, some of them, you even hired them to work for you. You even engaged them to do a job 
God for you. You are walking with them. Some of you, they're your business partners. I'm telling you, there's some of you that have had allies and they've thrown you onto the bus. You've had those of you, you engaged, you, uh, uh, you, you, you hired to do a job. You brought them in to do a work in your business and they did the opposite of what you told them to do. It's like they had a deaf ear. You gave them an instruction. You said, do this and don't do that. Say this and don't say that. And instead of advocating for you, they're advocating for your adversary. Oh, there it is. There's a sum in your life. My God, my God, my God. And they've been, they're supposed to have been advocating for you. It might have been a friend. It might have been a mother. It might have been somebody. Uh, it's your church. It might have been your pastor. I'm telling you, I see it so clearly that those who are supposed to, who are supposed to have been advocating for you are advocating for your adversary. They flipped over to the other side. That is how information, come on, I, I can just see it. Information leaks and you don't know how did that information get leaked? How did that information, who found out, how did they know this? It's because someone that is supposed to have been advocating for you is advocating for your adversary. Oh dear God, would you help me? It's like a mole. It's like a mole, not a mole on your arm or on your neck, a mole. It's like a secret agent. It's like somebody that's been pretending to be on your side and they're not really on your side. They've been sent in by the enemy. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for exposing. Dear God Almighty, this is a part of the exposure. I can't, I, I can just see it so clearly. You're wondering, how did this happen? How did this backfire? It's because someone who was supposed to be advocating for you has been advocating for your adversary. They've been giving them information. They've been giving them the heads up. They've been, oh, shorter on my stakata. You've told them, I want this handled this way. I want it handled that way. I need you to represent me on this level. I need you to send this message. And instead of doing Doing that which you were told they were told to do. Oh, they've gone around and they've twisted the thing. They flipped the script on you and they've sent another message and it's caused you damage. But the Lord says, I see it. I see it and I myself will make it right because I am your advocate. I am your intercessor. I am your standby, says the Lord. I am the lifter of your head. I am the one who exalts you, defends you, protects you and provides for you, says God. So don't even worry because I'm bringing in exposure. Don't worry about what happens in this situation. Don't worry about what people are going to think of you because the message you sent uh, through an advocate, through a, through an advocate uh, was used against you in an adversarial way because your message was twisted. Your message was perverted. And now it seems like you don't know who you can trust, says the Lord, but you can trust me because I am trustworthy, says the Lord. You can trust me. I am your advocate and I will advocate for you uh, with those who who have come against you. I will show them the wrong of their way, says the Lord. I will show them the error of their, of their, uh, of their manipulation. I will show them how they've come out of alignment with me and they will have the opportunity to repent. And even some of your enemies, you thought they were your friends, but they turned into enemies. They stood against you. In this season, they will come back after my conviction falls upon them because I love them and I want them free. But they will come back to you apologizing and you won't you will even be surprised by some some of those who come to you because you would never have suspected and you did not even discern and you had no knowledge that these very ones were the ones who were standing against you in secret but the Lord says I'm exposing these things and I want reconciliation and I want healing I don't want a bitterness and the Lord says the reason why some of them have been advocating for your adversary is become of so, because of some small offense that they harbored in their heart against you. And you didn't even know it because you didn't even do anything offensive. It wasn't offensive, but they took it as an offense because their adversary twisted it in their ears and their adversary took part, uh, took, took, uh, took, took part something that, that was in their heart, a particle, a, a particle of unforgiveness, a particle of resentment and watered that seed and blew it up. You're going to be surprised, says the Lord, about those who come to you in this 
season confessing that they had offense against you and asking for forgiveness from you they've been advocating for your adversary they've been working behind the scenes against you oh Jesus I thank you Lord that you bring healing uh, to those who were, should have been standing for us and stood against us in the secret places oh they say honored us publicly with their lips but their hearts were far from us God we thank you that you understand we thank you that you see and know all things we thank you that you bring conviction your love upon them the conviction of your love the conviction of your heart not condemnation not judgment mercy triumphs over judgment Lord we lift up our advocates who turned into adversaries we lift them up to you in the name of the Lord and we say God if we've done something uh, to offend them Lord help us to see so we can go to them and ask for forgiveness but Lord if, we, if we've not done anything and the enemy has perverted and twisted a thing and ca caused an offense that caused them to turn against us God show them the truth show them the light break in with your love convict them of their wicked ways that they might not continue sowing seeds from which they're going to reap an evil harvest God we don't want to see this chain this chain of hurt this chain of offense this chain of of, of, of sour seeds uh, continue to be sown God break the chain break the cycle break it God for your glory and for the sake of those who are in bondage God in the name of Jesus help us keep our hearts right help us to keep our hearts right help us Lord even I just see there's this religious spirit talking to some of you uh, I, I gotta be careful here I don't want to, to, to I don't I don't want well you know I'm just gonna say it because the Lord is showing me there's a there's a religious spirit that's attacking some of you and some of you just want to bow down so low it's not even God in other words we need to do what the Bible says but there's a time when the Lord will actually have you speak up and speak out against wrongdoing there is a time to shout and there's a time to remain silent we see it in the Bible when Jesus was confronted we see sometimes he didn't say a thing when he was accused sometimes he didn't say a thing when he was wronged sometimes he didn't say a thing oh but there were other times when he was wronged when he was accused when he did speak out when he did set the record straight when he did let it be no wait a second this is not just this is not right this is downright wrong there is a time yes there is a time let's not twist scripture let's not twist the thing yes turn the other cheek walk the extra mile but there's a time there's a time when you ain't got no cheeks left and you've got to speak out of your mouth because your cheeks are bloodied and bruised and there is a time when the Holy Spirit will lead you to say enough is enough I'm not going to submit myself to this any longer I'm not going to align with you any longer I'm not going to put up with this abuse any longer there is a time there is a time Jesus only did what he saw the Father do Jesus was led by the Spirit of God hear me now sometimes Jesus was very silent he didn't say a thing oh they they mocked him they scourged him he did not speak out he did not defend himself other times he spoke up and he said this that and the other and he set the record straight we must be led by the Spirit of God I'll break that religiosity off you that wants to just bow down to the enemy's plans it's one thing to just allow a person uh, to wrong you it's another thing to bow down to a spirit that's trying to control you we're not going to do it. We're going to love people, but we will not bow to the enemy. We will bow to, to Oshoko, to you and you alone, Jesus. I'm just seeing it so clearly. The enemy, this religious spirit, has some of you in bad, makes me so mad. Some of you in bondage, twisting scripture. Oh, just isn't that what the devil did? He brought Jesus up to a high place. He said, he said, cast yourself off this mountain and, 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 and God's angels, they will not let you dash your foot of stone. They'll kill. And Jesus said, and Jesus said, but it is also written don't tempt the Lord your God see there is a religiosity dear God would you help me this makes me so mad that wants to twist scripture you don't have to bow to a demon that is abusing you in the sake of unity you don't have to bow to a devil that's using you because scripture says turn the other cheek you must be led by the spirit more times than not he will have us to remain silent Here's the thing, when you come into a workplace and your boss is messing with you, yeah, you need to be silent, but there might come a day when the line crosses, when it, when it crosses the line, and you might have to say, sir, ma'am, I'm sorry, but this is not right. There comes a day when enough is enough, but you must be led by, hear me now, hear me, don't take me out of context, you must be led by the Spirit, humility is always the right way. 
And humility has no rights. But when they begin to cross a line where they are, how do I say this? Where they are, when you're, when you're bowing to a demon, <laughs> people say, well, what do I do when, when, my, when my, some of my family has a Jezebel spirit? What do I do? Well, you can still love the person and walk in humility with the person, but you do not have to bow to control and you do not have to bow to manipulation. Are you getting it? There is a time to just walk softly. There is a time to just let them take your coat and your cloak also. There's a time to walk an extra mile, but there's a time when enough is enough and it becomes abuse. It becomes so vile. It becomes demonic. See, there's a difference. See, when someone, listen, let me put it to you this way. Sometimes people act out in the flesh. Sometimes people act out in the flesh, and it's not a demon necessarily inspiring them. It's just the flesh. The, the, listen, the flesh is evil in its own right. And we don't want to walk in the flesh when someone else is walking in the flesh. We don't, we, we, don't, we don't get down on that flesh level. We come up higher. We walk in the spirit. I'm not going to respond to someone who's freaking out against me in the flesh. I will not bow to that fleshly temptation in my heart to answer, to answer in kind. But when someone is being motivated by a demon and trying to cause me to subjugate me to a demon power, trying to cause me to bow down, to bow down, to come up under an evil force, to put me in bondage, Oh, uh, 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 no, I'm not doing that. Are you getting the picture? You understand? There's a difference. There's a time to shout. There's a time to remain silent. Jesus sometimes spoke to his accusers and other times he just did not. You got to be led by the Lord. Father, give us discernment. Help us, Lord, to be led by you in all things. Help us, Lord, to know when to shout in warfare, when to remain silent in warfare, when to answer our accusers, when to make a statement. And when to just stay quiet and wait for you to vindicate. Let us be led by your spirit in every way, shape, and form. Let us not be those uh, who, who get in the flesh and respond out of the flesh. But let us not be those who get so religious that we allow the enemy to twist the scripture and where we continue to put up with abuse and wrong behavior. God's not called you to be a doormat. It's a fine line here, guys. It's a fine line. It's a fine line. It's a fine line. It's a fine line. It is a fine line, but you can walk it. You can walk it. Amen. You can walk it. It takes a maturity. It takes spending time with the Lord. And let me just say this. When in doubt, keep your mouth shut because the Lord has a way to be able to get through to you. You can never go wrong. You can never go wrong by waiting on the Lord. You can never go wrong by waiting on the Lord, but you'll know, you'll know, you will know, amen, you'll know. I didn't mean to get off on that, but it just made me so mad. I haven't been that angry, righteous indignation in the spirit. This whole religiosity thing wants to, wants to twist scripture and it causes us just to lay down and let people just, de demon inspired people just subjugate us and put us in bondage, inflict wounds on us. There's a time to shout. There's a time to stay silent. There's a time. There's a time. Read the Gospels. Read the Gospels. See what Jesus did. Look and see what Jesus did. Amen? Amen? I advocate walking in humility. And as far as it depends on you, being at peace, at peace with all men. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews. But here's the thing. You cannot be at peace with a devil. So when it crosses over into this demonic agenda, you, you can't bow. You can't, you can't humble yourself to a devil. You got it? Amen? Praise God. Listen, I want to share with you. The Lord showed me very clearly uh, that, the, that there's, a, there's, a, there's a flipping that's happening. Some of you, the enemy has been making your head swim and spin. And I have a, a word for you. I want to share that with you in just a minute. Ever feel like I've been listen? I've been dealing with demonic dizziness every night since I got to Dallas with the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders. This has been one. Of, this has been yesterday. I was just shaking and weeping under the glory of God. I could not. 
just fathom the goodness of the Lord. There was such a divine Holy Spirit moment. It was amazing. And then we had a situation with uh, one of the brothers from Africa who got up and began to cry and just began to weep. And it just caused a weeping to come over most of the, the prophets. There's prophets from like 58 nations here. It's been, it's been wild. I mean, just what a moment. You just can't make this stuff up. Amen. But I've had every night dizziness. Wake up dizzy. Turn over to lay on one side or the other dizzy. And I began to ask the Lord about some of that. You know, sometimes being a, uh, uh, you know, walking in the office of the prophet, you, you're sort of a forerunner and things will begin to manifest in your life and it's a sign to the rest of the body of Christ or a warning to the rest of the body of Christ. So I want to share that with you in just a minute. It could be, see, there's spiritual dizziness and there's natural dizziness. I've been experiencing uh, some of that. So I want to share that with you in just a minute. I want to give you an opportunity to, to sow into this ministry. Some of you might get tired of hearing me say that. You know what? You don't get tired of hearing me pray, so don't get tired of hearing me give you an opportunity to be even more blessed by giving. Amen? Somebody put a nasty remark on my Facebook page. I'm tired of hearing. Well, you're on my prayer calls every day. You don't get tired of hearing me pray. So let me take three minutes and give you an opportunity to sow that you might be more blessed. Praise God. See, religion, the religious spirit never wants to give. The religious spirit only wants to take. And if the religious spirit does give, they want to blow trumpets. That's what the Bible says. That the Pharisees made a show out of their giving. They blew trumpets as they went and brought their gift to the basket. Isn't that ridiculous? I hate that religious spirit. And they want to get on my Facebook page and say, I'm so tired of seeing your PayPal link. And I'm so tired of hearing you ask for money. Well, dear God, you're on my prayer line every morning for 45 minutes and you're blessed. So I can't spend three minutes sewing a, a casting vision. Amen. Religious spirits, one of these days we're not going to have to deal with them anymore because there's called it an eternal kingdom and there will be no religious spirits in heaven. Aren't you glad? There will be no Jezebel spirits in the kingdom of God in heaven. Praise God. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. In the meantime, I'm going to do what God told me to do. And if the religious spirits don't like it, well, bless God. Next time someone puts a nasty comment like that, I'm going to block you. And then you don't get to hear the prayers because you're releasing witchcraft at me. Amen. Y'all don't, you, some of y'all don't know what to make of me because I'm bold. But you know what? I'm being bold with the devil. I love the people. But if you want to constantly attack me, then guess what? That's what Facebook made the block button for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, bless those who persecute you. Well, you know what? I'll bless you, but I don't mean I have to sit there and let you attack me on my page. Amen. Praise God. If you want to sow a seed, you can do that. Some of y'all need more boldness. You need to sow a boldness seed. Some of you have been putting up with some, some of Jezebel's uh, nasty for too long. Some of you have been bowing to religion for too long. Some of you have been uh, coming up under that mammon spirit for too long. Say, hey, you can't give. You know what? Do what God tells you to do, bless God. If you want to sow a seed, sow a seed. If you feel compelled in your heart to sow, sow. If you don't, then don't. You're free. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. You do what you want to do. According to the Word of God. According to the will of God. You don't have to be afraid when God tells you to do something. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, if you want to sow a seed, go to jenniferleclair.org slash donate. We filmed a couple of the episodes of the new Jezebel series that's going to be in three quarters of the world. Uh, in uh, eight languages. Eight languages? Twelve languages. I forget. Uh, we've, we filmed a couple pilot test episodes to make sure all the settings and program. You know, when you send your TV show to a TV station, they have all these different things you got to do. So I, we're trying to make sure we have that all right before we uh, produce more, more content. Uh, but it's going to be absolutely outstanding. I received prophetic words yesterday from folks about how the media floodgates are going about to open uh, for me. And I believe that. I believe it. I believe that I've got a media mantle for this generation. Uh, I've been in media my whole life. Before I was a minister, I was a media maven. Uh, and I, I was the top 1% earner in my field uh, as a writer. I did all kinds of writing. I worked for Microsoft, Amazon, uh, all the four, four IBM, Fortune 500 companies, as well as New York Times, Associated Press, and all these others. And so I've carried a media mantle my own life, my whole life, uh, but it's about to explode in a new way. Amen. It's about to explode in a new way. The, the only thing is the media stuff costs money. So if you want to sow into that vision, listen, I've got so many thoughts, plans, and ideas to bless the world, to cross over into, listen, to cross over into secular markets. 
with a message that's not overtly Christian, but that still carries gospel hope, that opens the door for salvation. I've got so many, uh, I, the Lord has given me witty inventions, but I need your help to execute these things. Prayer is, is the, my life's work, but media is a vehicle to release prayer and teachings. Amen. You can go to jenniferleclair.org slash donate. jenniferleclair.org slash donate. Amen. I'm going to take that media mountain, or I'm not alone, not alone, but I'm going to be part of, the, part of taking that back. Amen. Or you can go to paypal.me slash jenniferleclair. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. You can also go to text to give. You text the word P-R-A-Y. Not give me a word. Not pray for me. It's not a prayer line. Praise God. We do have a prayer uh, a prayer website where we have intercessors. You can go to 247prayerroom.com. Please don't text your prayer request to the text to give number because we won't get an answer and we'd hate for you to feel ignored. Amen. Text the word pray, P-R-A-Y. Seven five four seven zero one two one six one, or you can use the PO box, PO box three nine five three. If you're sending a check or money order, PO box three nine five three, Hallandale Beach, Florida three three zero zero eight. Yes, I got it right this time. Three three zero zero eight. Listen, sow if you want to sow. Don't let religion rob from you. Don't let Jezebel intimidate you. And if you don't want to sow, the Lord's not leading you. Just bless those who do and come in agreement. That the that the needs of the ministry and all the people that are sowing will be will be uh will be taken care of. Amen. Just get an agreement. Don't get nasty. Hallelujah. God gives seed to the sower. God's good, and He wants to bless you. And I I'm grateful for the opportunity to do these calls. I know sometimes I get real bold, but I'm confronting devils and demon powers. I'm not talking to people. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You want to be part of my intercessory intercessory prayer team? Please go to. Uh, prayforjennifer.com I see that uh, I see that people asking a couple questions I haven't been looking at the comments lately (laughs) we don't want people feeling rejected because you text a prayer request to the text to give line it's not for that we don't actually we don't actually do that okay I see somebody's laughing yet you guys are so funny amen praise God Amen. So listen, I can't remember what else I needed to tell you. Um, yeah, the prayforjennifer.com. Amen. Uh, remember, on Sunday at 5 p.m., I'm going to be sharing publicly the vision for my Ignite Network for 2018. This is a free broadcast. Uh, it's it, You can sign up for it, and we'll tell you where to go find it. I realize my developer did not embed that anywhere. <laughs> so I realized that this morning. Hallelujah. Please pray for my developer. He is a wonderful man of God. Uh, but there's, I've got so much on his plate that sometimes these details, either they escape me or they escape him. Between the two of us, we always get it right. But I don't think he embedded it anywhere. I don't even know if I asked him. So he's embedding that now. We'll send that if, you're, if, you, uh, if, you, um, if you signed up on Eventbrite. The reason why we asked you to sign up on Eventbrite was so that we could send you links. We can send you replays. Amen. Uh, because if we if we don't have your email address, we cannot send you the replay. And some of you I know can't watch it at 5 p.m. on Sunday. But if you want to learn more about what Ignite is and what it does and what we're going to do, God has given me a huge vision for 2018. The network is officially a year old. We have uh, ignited over 400 prophetic voices. Prophets, apostles are in our network, believers. Uh, IgniteNow.org is the website uh, currently. Uh, we are building a brand new website. I'm told it will be done by the end of November for all this. So I'm uh, I'm hoping. You know how websites are. You got to test them for bugs and da 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 da. Hallelujah. And and it's going to be good. Blockbuster 2018. Yes. But go sign up for that. You can go to my my JenniferLeClaire.org and then hit the events tab, and that will take you to. Um, the, all the events we have, and you'll see the Ignite Network's prophetic vision for 2018. If, if you're at all interested, just go sign up, and we'll send you the link to the video. I want you to see me, and I want you to hear my voice. If you can come to, if you're in South Florida, come in person. Uh, but we're going to be recording it at 5 p.m. So do that. You know, it's 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 <laughs> it's just amazing what the Lord is doing. I'm so excited. I just bust right out of my shoes right now with with what God has done through Ignite. I had no idea that it, I just thought. <laughs> My, my, I didn't dream wild enough, amen, but I'm dreaming wild for 2018. I want you to be part of it. 
ignitenow.org. You get discounts to everything else I do on the Jennifer LeClaire ministry side when you when you register. But that's like that's that's a nothing benefit compared to everything else you get spiritually. Amen. God is good. I'm going to be doing some regional events next year for Ignite. Hallelujah. Awakeningblaze.com. Join the movement. Don't have time to talk about that. Awakeningblaze.com. If you're an intercessor, join the movement. I was sitting. I was having lunch yesterday with Lou Engel, and uh, we were talking about. Uh, we were talking about some of the intercessory prayer stories he has, and he's like, he's like Jennifer, you've heard me tell this story so many times. You've written about this story, but I'm going to tell it again. And he's such a father uh, in the uh, in the uh, prayer movement. He's endorsed Awakening Blaze, and uh, it was a pleasure and honor to get to, to sit and have lunch with him yesterday, and and just hear what's next and what he's doing, what's on his heart. Uh, so go to awakeningblaze.com, amen, uh, and, 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 and find out more uh, and, and get involved in that if it blesses you, amen. Uh, God is good. There are such rewards in heaven for the intercessors. I know that you're so overlooked many times and underappreciated. Let me tell you something. I appreciate intercessors more than you know, more than you know, more than you know. Hallelujah. Uh, Jennifer LeClaire Ministries app, go to your app store. And do uh, decide to put in my name. You'll find that. Um, praise God. What else here? Oh, I know I do some of the same announcements every day, but it's because there's different people on. So just bear with me. We've got about two more minutes, and we're going to go back into this uh, head spinning thing. Listen, the Sears, uh, the Sears event. Dear Lord in heaven, would you please, if you have any interest at all in learning about what is a seer, Please sign up for this. Somebody sent me a nasty email yesterday. I don't know how these people get my personal address. I really don't. Well, I can't believe you're charging, you're charging me a, a price to become a seer. Dear Lord in heaven, would you get that Jezebel spirit off you and understand that nobody's charging you to become a seer? We are streaming this live on a platform that costs thousands and 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 th th more than that a year to stream on. So it costs us money to do it. All we're asking you is to sow a small token into that that we can make this available widely. Amen. $29 is what it costs. It, that's really nothing. You spend more than that uh, going out to dinner and eating food that y'all ain't supposed to be eating anyway. Praise God. You're not supposed to be eating all that food. You're supposed to be feeding your spirit well, I can't afford it. Fast a meal, sweetheart. You need this. If you're interested in this, you need it. Amen. I'm teasing you. I'm glad that you appreciate my sense of humor. Listen, seriously. Stop attacking me for this stuff. It's ridiculous. Amen. Go if you want to learn what a seer is. Look, you, you don't have to be a seer to see in the spirit. God, the Bible says, in the last days I'll pour my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall have dreams. Your young men shall see visions. In the Bible, even unbelievers had visions. Even unbelievers had dreams. God is wanting to speak to you through the medium, the, the, not medium like a psychic, through the medium, as, that's a word we use in communications. There are communication mediums, TV, writing, radio. Those are medium, me, mediums of communication. God wants to, 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 to open your eyes. It doesn't mean you're going to have visions all the time, but there's such a confusion. And some of you seers, you need validation. And you've not been taught right. And there's some books out there on seeing that are just wrong. I'm not going to name which ones because I don't want to come in against each other, anybody. But I've been reading one recently, and I'm like, dear God, this is, this is all speculation. This is all, this is all, this is not right. There's error. So if that's you and you want to learn more about this, please go sign up, ahop.tv 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 you'll see we've got a lot of different things there but this is the one Sunday at 1.30 if you can't watch it at 1.30 then you can watch it later you're not buying a gift I'm not Simon the Sorcerer and I'm not selling gifts amen praise God ahop.tv there's no distance in the spirit you can receive an impartation and an activation Anywhere you are. Back in the Voice of Healing movement, Oral Roberts used to say, lay your hands on this TV. And people would get healed. Because that, that was the point of contact. Amen? The video is available forever. Till Jesus comes back. If you want to sign up for, you know, you can, I'm not answering all these questions, dear ones. I, I can't get distracted in all this admin on my prayer call. Okay, go to the site. 
You can see, I promise you, it's all there. Amen? Ahop.tv. I would like to answer all your questions, but I'd be here for an hour, and I really need to get into this, uh, this teaching here on the swimming and the spinning. Amen? The prayer and mentoring, uh, uh, the seats are, 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 are getting filled rapidly. Prayer school. I'm not prayer school. I'm sorry. Mentoring and prayer program. Go to schoolthespirit.tv. Amen? Listen, I want to get into this issue here uh, before it gets any later. I would love to personally answer all your questions, but that's why I have a staff. Please go to the appropriate sites and find uh, the information. Really, if you just read the, if you just go to Ahop TV and read it, anything that I do, it's always very, very clearly explained. You just got to take a minute just, just to, just to read it. And, uh, and we try to make it clear. I forgive me if something's not clear. We don't mind your questions, but please email them. All right. Listen. Here's the thing. Let me get a drink of water so. Prophet Vanessa can laugh at me for drinking water. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning about this issue of head spinning and head swimming. Now, I've been here in Dallas, and in the evening, I've been dealing with dizziness. I flip over my pillow one side to the other, dizzy. I, I, I got up to get some water. I stumbled and almost fell because of this dizziness. What in the world is going on? What's happening? Well, you know, some people might say, well, you're not eating enough protein, bless God. You don't have enough water. You know, there's all kinds of medical reasons why you could be dizzy. But I, here's the thing. I've learned over, over the last, you know, 15, 16 years to discern between a physical issue and a demonic issue see there there are physical issues yes you can you know you can get a knocked in the head and you can end up getting dizzy did you know that there can be things in your ear your ear could be clogged you can have an ear infection there's things in your in your inner ear that can cause a natural dizzy, dizziness this is not what i'm talking about you must discern the root of an issue amen so here's the thing. Uh, the Lord showed me this morning when I was praying uh, that the enemy has caused some of your heads to spin and swim. Have you ever heard of that? That, that saying, my head is spinning or my head is swimming. The enemy has caused many of you to feel like your head is swimming, like your head is spinning. But the Lord said, I am about to make your head spin and I'm about to make your head swim because I have such great plans and purposes for you that it's going to absolutely overwhelm you, says God. And you don't even see it coming. Bobby Connor said yesterday in the meeting, uh, so prepare to be surprised. And when he said that, oh boy, my spirit left. Oh, how can you prepare uh, to be surprised? You know what? In a way you cannot, but it's a long the lines of what I've been preaching about the sudden encounters, about the suddenlies. The enemy has brought a, a demonic suddenlies in your life, but God is about to bring divine suddenlies in. Prepare to be surprised. But what does this mean? Let's look at see what this really means. I looked it up. I like to look things up. Many times when the Lord gives you a phrase, when he gives you a word, sometimes it's not even in English. Sometimes he'll give you a Spanish word. He'll just give you this word. I, I, I just got to look up and see what it means. I don't even know if it's a real word sometimes. Like, what is this? Is this tongues? Praise God. What is this? And, and, I, and, I, and I find there's a definition. There's a meaning to different words sometimes he'll give me. They're even in other languages. But here, what does this mean? I looked it up. Make someone, what does it mean to make your head swim or make your head spin? Uh, if figuratively, it means to make someone dizzy or disoriented. Kind of like when you go on a merry-go-round. It makes your head spin. You ever go on that teacup ride in Disney? You go on that... I don't like those rides that spin around and around and around. I don't like them. I don't like them. I went one time to this thing in, in South Florida. It's called Santa's Enchanted... Uh, I don't know. I think it's called Santa's Enchanted Forest. My daughter was little. It's this. It's like a little carnival kind of. There's you just sort of go there and you ride rides. Well, we got on this spinner thing, and I don't know what, but it made me so sick. See, the enemy wants to make you nauseous spiritually. The enemy wants to make you sickly spiritually by making your head spin. He wants to disorient you. He wants to make you dizzy. It also means confuse or overwhelm. All these numbers make my head swim. This lecture made my head spin. You know, sometimes you go listen to certain preachers and they're so deep and it just makes your head swim. You're like, oh, that was overwhelming. I don't even understand what he said. It was good. My spirit says yes, but my head says what? Wait, who, what, how? 
praise God. The devil has been making some of your heads swim. Some of your heads spin in this season with overwhelm. He's trying to disorient you. He's trying to make you dizzy in the spirit. Make you nauseous and sickly. Like you can't even walk straight. You know what happens when you get really dizzy? Think about it. You know what? I don't actually do this. But if you spun yourself around about 50 times real fast. Just spun around in circles. You know what would happen? You would stagger like a drunk person. You would be, you, you, your, your head would be swimming and spinning. So it means this overwhelm. But God's about to flip the script because he's about to orient you. He's about to give you a new orientation, a new vista, a new perspective. Things that had seemed blurry. Things that had seemed uh, uh, like they were just uh, unclear to you. There's about to be a clarity. As you sit in his presence, he's going to bring a stability to you. Because the enemy, I'm speaking to you by the spirit of God. The enemy has tried to bring an instability in your life. He's tried to bring unstableness. He, 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 James says uh, that a double-minded man... See, here's the thing. The, the devil's tried to bring confusion and doubt and fear to bring you into a double-mindedness. But the Bible says in the book of James that the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And, make, and let not that man think he'll receive anything from the Lord. See, I'm even getting attacked with dizziness right now. That's why I know it's demonic. Ain't nothing wrong with me. My ears are fine. I eat plenty of protein, bless God. And nobody smacked me upside the head. There's nothing wrong with me. But... It's called a demonic attack. It's witchcraft. We're going to pray against that in a minute. But here's the thing. Isaiah 43 and 2. See, some of you have been... The enemy comes with this dizziness, this, this overwhelm when you're in the middle of a trial many times. That's not the only time. I'm not in the middle of a trial right now. I'm on top of the world right now. Praise God. I've never had such a good time of my life as I've had these past couple of days. Time of my life. Isaiah 43 and verse 2. When you pass through the waters... See, the enemy's trying to make your head spin. Catch it now. The enemy's trying to make your head swim. Catch it now. Isaiah 43 and 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. Remember, to make your head swim, to make your head spin, it's an overwhelming. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Let me just read that scripture again, because it's a promise. The enemy comes with overwhelm, with dizziness, with all these things. It, 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 there's water analogies. But the Lord says in Isaiah 43 and 2, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Hallelujah. Yep. And Psalm 23, verse 2, the Bible says, He make me lie down in green pastures. Listen, He leads me beside still waters. Still waters. See, when your head is swimming, you're, you're not still. You're overwhelmed. But the Lord leads you beside still waters, not tumultuous waters, not hurricane force of waters and waves, not tsunami waters. Still waters, peaceful waters. Hallelujah. So, Father, I thank you this morning for the anointing of the Spirit of God to break every yoke. I break the powers of head swimming and head spinning, all this demonic witchcraft in the name of the Lord. I thank you, Lord. We stand against witchcraft. We stand against all of these things that stand against your will in our lives. We shall not be overwhelmed. We shall not be confused. We shall not be double minded. But we will stand in the faith of God, the God kind of faith, your very faith that you put on the inside of us, Jesus, we will stand and believe you because you are good and your mercies, oh, they endure forever and ever and ever and ever. So Lord, help us to stand and withstand in the evil day. I break these assignments off of our lives. I say, peace be still in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. God is good. We're going to go back into worship. We're going to go back into worship. You guys are awesome. Love you. Love you, love you, love you.